do we have hope for male factor infertility? We know that 50% of infertility is due to the male factor. In the good old days, all types of treatment were recommended for poor sperm quality with no real success rates. Today, we have a technique in the form of intracytoplasmic sperm injection where most men with even the poorest of poor of sperm quality can still hope to be fathers with their own sperm. So, with IUI, we also have ICSI and we also have IMSI for these men. These are all different types of treatment where the principle is that whatever few sperm are available to us in the semen sample, we use them in the laboratory and somehow produce an embryo for the wife to conceive. The beauty of ICSI is that it utilizes the fact that finally you need only one out of millions of sperms to produce a baby. So we can actually pick up one sperm under high magnification, inject it into the wife's egg and produce a good embryo in the laboratory. Even in cases of azoospermia, we can now retrieve viable live sperm from the epididymis by a technique known as PISA, simple needle aspiration with a very thin needle from that part of the testes which is at the top known as the epididymis which especially will give sperm in cases of obstructive azoospermia meaning there is some kind of a block which is preventing sperms from coming out of the testes into the seminal ejaculate. In other cases where there is non-obstructive azoospermia, we can again with a simple needle remove sperm from the testes with multiple needle biopsies. No cuts, no stitches, very easy technique, relatively painless. Of course, for the very difficult cases, we now do have microsurgical TISA for sperm retrieval wherein actually we do it under the microscope and try and find a few handful of sperms to try and give them their own biological child. Even paraplegic men who cannot otherwise have a normal erection and ejaculation can avail of a technique called electroejaculation for extracting sperm and then using it for ICSI. Even for patients of retrograde ejaculation where unfortunately sperm instead of coming out goes into the urinary bladder, we have techniques for retrieving sperm from the urinary bladder and using it for ICSI. ICSI was discovered almost 20 years ago by sheer accident in a laboratory in Belgium but is now in routine use at most leading IVF clinics. There was a lot of concern initially that this is too much of tampering with nature. What about the babies? Are they going to be abnormal? Does ICSI and IVF cause abnormal babies? Today we have lots of studies, several large studies from Belgium and Australia and from several other countries in the world where the babies have been followed up to the ages of 3, 5, 10 and even 15 years of age. Most of these studies have proven that these children do not suffer from any kind of handicap nor do they have any learning disabilities. So please feel safe to embark upon an IVF or ICSI program. The children are going to be normal in our own experience. Our clinic now has more than 10,000 live births to its credit. In the past one year alone, we produced more than 1,800 babies and except for two babies who had minor anomalies which is even seen in the normal population no other major abnormalities were found with any of the IVF procedures.